Okay, my name is Morna Gerard and I am interviewing Lisa Flaherty for Georgia State University Women's March Oral History Project. The date is May 5th, 2017 and the interview is taking place in Special Collections at the Georgia State University Library. So um, let's start with the year you were born and where you were born. I was born in 1965 in Washington, D.C. And when did you make your way down to this area? Um, my father came to Atlanta for work. He was in, um, in architecture and construction, and um, we came down in the early 70s because Atlanta was experiencing a boom in construction, um, and I was eight years old. And what did your mom do? My mom worked for the uh, insurance industry, so she uh, so it was very easy for her to, to come down here and transfer. Um, for the first couple of years, though, she was at home with us, um, managing the move down, and we were still quite young. And where in the Atlantic, the Atlanta area did you move to? Um, in um, Decatur, but not Decatur proper, uh, uh, unincorporated Decatur, so over towards Street Hills area. Okay. And you live in Decatur now, so whereabouts in Decatur do you do you live? I live um, over towards, uh, well, Lakeside High School, I think is the easiest uh, to say. It's right on um, Barncliff Road. Uh, can you just tell me about your profession? I am a flight attendant. Um, I was hired uh, 29 years ago, and um, I was hired because I speak German. And um, at the time, the airline that I worked for was expanding into Germany, um, into Europe, and uh, they needed translators. And have you been happy at work all the time? Uh, well, I don't know. There's a lot of years to say all the time happy, come and go. But um, what's been fantastic is that if you become frustrated with one type of flying, there's many other ways to do it. Uh, if you don't want to be gone for a lot of days, you can be gone for one day, um, two days, three days, six days, nine days, 12 days, you know. Um, so you can kind of pick. You can also choose whether you want to fly in, in, in your region or you can choose to fly far, far away. So, so that, that helps that you're able to change things up at will. And what, what, what regions do you tend to fly in? Um, well, when the children are young, I stuck with the Germany trips because I could get all my hours in in a very short amount of time. So I tended to leave on Fridays and come back, Friday evenings, and come back uh, Sunday afternoon, late afternoon, evening. And um, in that way, I could be with the kids Monday through Friday, and my husband could take over on the weekend. Um, we uh, and he, he traveled for work uh, as well, so uh, we were able to do that that sort of handoff for a while. Um, it uh, often our neighbors would tease us that you know we really my husband really didn't have a wife. He was just saying that when he'd go to you know any kind of sports events or or ballet recitals and things like that. Um, but uh, but it, it seemed to work out for us. And what do you do now? I'm, I still work for the airlines, um, and I just graduated from GSU with, uh, from the MHT Heritage Preservation Program. Congratulations. And thank you. And um, I have been working, um, volunteering and working at museums, and, um, and uh, I've hopefully just started a project over at the Historical Society in Smyrna. That's great. So trying to keep busy. That's wonderful. Um, can you describe your family's um, political leanings or political activities as you were growing up? Um, uh, my family's political leanings were, were Republican. Um, so uh, the Republican Party and the Democratic Party have kind of swapped places. And so for them, that shift, uh, my father has, has passed away, he passed away in 2008, um, that shift has been hard for them to, particularly my mom now, to 
to fully digest. Um, but they were always for very conservative ideas as far as spending. Um, the religious right would have had no interest. Um, uh, I think my parents would firmly say that um, religion and politics didn't really belong together. Um, but uh, I have noticed that my mom, when she listens to what's happening, she seems very disappointed. Um, and it, it kind of, it makes me sad. She, um, like they let her down. I think there are a lot of people who are traditional Republicans who yeah. probably have felt that, that way. Um, I have two brothers, and, and one of them is, is very firmly a Democrat now. Um, uh, the older one um, w would still describe himself as a Republican, and he seems to have embraced um, a lot of the kind of ancillary ideas that have come around. So it makes for off awkward family, but you know, with family, if it wasn't something awkward, it'd be another awkward, you know. Um, what political party do you support? Um, the Democratic Party right now. Um, but I worked on the Dole campaign, and I also volunteered for Sam Nunn. Mm -hmm. So I was never firmly in one camp or another. But right now, I seem to be firmly in the Democratic. Okay. Have you been? Well, you said that you you worked on campaigns before. Mm -hmm. um, were those those the the only campaigns you worked on? Have you been involved in anything other political, sort of like in terms of activism or? Um. Well, you know, um, in the previous year, there really hasn't been anything that I felt could get me up out of a chair. Um, I've called, um, I've sent messages and uh, to representatives, and I always felt that that was sufficient. Um, we did, uh, my son was very curious about Jon Stewart's um, uh, Rally for Sanity, mm -hmm. I think it's a Rally or Return to Sanity. Um, so we so we went up there um, to for him to kind of experience that uh, and uh, and he found it very intriguing. Um, he was very much attached to John Stewart and his approach to um, to that to to receiving news that way, which um, for for me and my generation, it's a very unusual way to receive news. But it's it's very addictive, though. It's 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 interesting. Um, and then prior to that, actually, the first march that I ever went on um, was an anti-abortion march, and I was in Vienna, Austria. And um, in light of, you know, everything that's gone on, um, I would still describe myself as, as anti-abortion. Um, what's really tragic, I mean, I, I don't think women walk around saying, hmm, I really want to experience that abortion. Um, but what's tragic and why I would, you know, and, and today the issue is Planned Parenthood, and I would support Planned Parenthood and the ability to access abortion, is because we in the United States have done absolutely nothing to help people not get pregnant. Um, you have to go to a doctor, uh, which I don't quite understand. The pill has been around um, for many years. It should be over the counter should be available to anyone, and if you can buy a condom for less than ten dollars, you should be able to buy uh, birth control pills. Um, but they, the, that, that, that's not out there. So as long as that hasn't happened, then I will continue to support someone's right to access an abortion. But uh, it does. I, I just think it's it's sad that that alternative has to be there and it has to happen for so many people. But that was my first march, and Vienna, Austria. <laughs> Which is like the one thing they tell you as a foreigner, never go to another country, never participate in a march, and there I went. But Why were you in Vienna at the time? I was doing an exchange program, and I was there for a year uh, studying German, and, uh, and my roommate um, was a, a medical student, and, um, and she said, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this, and uh, it, you know, it sounds like fun. 
before. And yeah, this is something I can get behind. And um, although in retrospect, I was behind an idea. I have really no idea what the fine, fine print was, even if I, I may not have any, been able to read it at that point. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so that's why I did it. And it, it really was a, it was a great, it's a very powerful experience. It really is. When you get around that many people and there's that much energy, and it was a very peaceful demonstration. Um, and what year was that? That would have been in um, 1985. Now you said you've got kids. What mm-hmm. how a uh, daughter is twenty seven and my son is nineteen. You do not look old enough to have a daughter is twenty seven. She was very good to me. <laughs> no not a whole lot of drama. So have you talked to your kids about politics or you know, how, and how do you how do you frame, you know, what's what's been going on like especially with the twenty sixteen electoral sort of cycle? I think as a parent one of the hardest things is to um, help them see both sides because right now they just don't get it, um, and and they um, everything is an extreme. And as much as uh, I say I'm a Democrat, there are, there the old Republican Party. There were elements that that were really very positive. I mean, you have to stop and say, well consider this and and once again the way they get their news um, is very different from the way that I grew up getting my news and um, and I, I try to encourage them to look at as many different sources and um, and even read the outrageous ones um, but um, but right after the election my daughter was very much a, a firm Hillary Clinton supporter I was kind of on the edge with that. Um, But she connected with her as a female. And um, so when she lost, it was devastating for her. Uh, uh, She she was, you know, in bed with the covers over her head. And um, and and that was and that was a, a really long conversation and saying, you know, the United States has taken steps back before. We'll be fine. And um, my son was down at the University of Alabama, and um, he uh, was a little bit more pragmatic about the whole thing. But uh, he said it was very interesting to see the students' response in a very um, conservative state. Uh, And um, he said uh, he said when he went into his political science course, the teacher just stopped and she said. We're not going to do anything that's on the on on the uh, syllabus today. We're just going to talk about this. So uh, so that that was kind of interesting to see how the university campus was dealing with it. How you know the twenty the millennials were feeling about it, um, and and their response. So uh, I I don't want to say I liked seeing that. Mm-hmm. Um, I I was intrigued by it all. How, what was your response to, to the election? Oh, it, I, I was stunned. I, I was literally stunned. I had gone to bed because I kind of felt, as everybody did, it was a done deal. And um, so when I woke up the next morning, I'm trying to remember what woke me up first, if the alarm went off or I got a text. Um, but they happened quite quickly. And uh, no, it must have been the alarm. So the alarm went off. And um, usually I pick up, I check emails and the news, and I was just, just dumbfounded. And I very quickly got an email from my roommate in Austria. Um, her name is Irena, and Irena had texted, <laughs> "What happened?" And uh, and yeah, I was stunned the whole day. I just felt like somebody had hit me upside the head, and I just couldn't regain my you know, my equilibrium, and, um, and then it, it was very ups- upsetting, um, it was hard to, 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 to watch the news, you wanted to fix it, <laughs> and, um, and it, it was, it was very hard to figure out what to do, and what to do next, um, my daughter Catherine is the one that had told me about the march up in D.C., and I had hoped that it would 
turn into something. Um, uh, the one percent protest had fizzled, and I, I really kind of wanted more of that. Um, that's actually one that I, I I really felt is where a lot of the problems lie. Um, and so I had seen that fizzled, and that was very disappointing. So when I heard about the march, you know, I had hopes for it, but I wasn't sure. Um, and then I made arrangements to have that day off, but I had come in late from a trip on Friday, immediately had to um, what we call deadhead on a plane, which means you have to find a plane with an empty seat, or you have to sit on the jump seat, which is the fold-down seat that flight attendants sit on. So I, I got up there, I think I arrived at like 10, um, and made my way to her place. Um, and then we were up early the next morning, and I had to actually be back Sunday morning for an 8 a.m. sign-in. <laughs> so I was, I was doing some, some quick travel down there, uh, or up there, rather. Um, but uh, but it, I, I'm glad I made that decision. At first I was looking at it going, oh, why am I going to do this? I'm going to be exhausted. And I, like I said, I wasn't sure if it was going to make a difference. Um, well, of course, I'm incredibly glad that I did. Um, but uh, I, I went up there and I didn't have my hat. Uh, I didn't have a sign. I didn't have anything. Um, but uh, but um, and another one of Catherine's friends um, that she had graduated with had come up there for the march too. So it was myself and the two of them. When you were on the flight up, did you see any other women that you thought were maybe going to the march on the, on the um, flight? On the flight up, not so much, because um, it was a very late flight up. Um, the the last one into DCA, I believe, and um, but coming back, I saw a lot, and um, I was kind of you know I was asking the, the flight attendants about it, and they said, oh well the return trip flight attendants would have come up early in the day so they would have had a sufficient sleep time and they were like oh yeah the plane coming up we had big cats up and down and there was actually a photo posted on our internal Facebook page that we have um, and and it was just a picture of the cabin and it's just like pink cats all the way up but uh, but yeah it was um, uh, but coming back I, I had, had a few people um, but I know there were a lot of buses. I saw yeah. a lot of buses when I was coming around. Um, the experience, I went from the Arlington Station, which I can't remember the name of it exactly, to Smithsonian Station on the metro up there. And um, when the three of us arrived, the station was packed. And there was a lot of shouting about, oh, they've closed the station down because of, or um, because of, crowding and, and was literally not able to move and um, so when we got on we kind of had to change our directions um, and so we decided on the Smithsonian the trains were so packed that they reminded me of in Japan you may have heard of shovers so they just push people on to get the door shut um, so I stepped on uh, the three of us were standing there, and Catherine said, okay, we've got to get on. I was like, okay. So I get on, and the door shuts behind me. I'm like, Catherine. But um, luckily for cell phones. Um, but what was great is I was had my face into somebody's book bag, and, um, and it was such an environment for someone that was claustrophobic to have truly panicked. And it... And you, you couldn't breathe really well because it was so stuffy. But what was strange is the, and this was my first taste of the march, was the incredible support. Everybody's like, oh, can you get up here? I'll move over here. Let me get my bag out of the way. Let me do this. And um, and they, they were talking. And um, usually on a subway, you don't talk to other people. Um, but there was this 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 atmosphere that was, that was really... Um, exciting to, to see. Uh, when I came up, <clears throat> coming out of the Smithsonian station, um, you know, I text my daughter 
and uh, it was elbow to elbow. I've just never been in such a packed um, situation, and like I said, it could have easily been frightening um, if people hadn't been so willing to, uh, to have been so thoughtful of those around them. And when I got up, um, we had decided to meet at a pole, uh, a light pole that's right there at the station. And as I was standing there, there was a police officer there, and uh, somebody turned and asked him, and they said, uh, um, how many people are here? And people seemed really, that, that, was, that meant a lot to a lot of people. And he goes, you know what? It's not Obama one, but I think it's more than Obama two. And, um, and so the person went on their way, so I'm standing there waiting, so uh, you know, I can't miss a conversation. So I said, How, how's it going? And he's like, this is the easiest work ever. I just stand here and talk to people. And I was like, that is so good to see because in those, those events, you know, of course, there's always the person that has some sort of quote from the Bible, and there's always someone smoking weed. That seems to be standard for, for these things. So, And it sort of delegitimizes what you're doing. So I was so, I was so pleased that you know here I had a taste of the atmosphere that only continued and that he um, and that he he was kind of reinforcing that and saying you know there's there's no violence nobody's saying anything there's no fights there's no um, otherwise shenanigans going on and uh, and then when I met up with my daughter that's when she brought me a hat because uh, as I said I had nothing and she said she was on the train and she was talking to someone like mother, like daughter, and the woman um, said, oh, your mom doesn't have a hat, and she opened up her bag, and she goes, I knitted all of these, and she said she had this little duffel bag that was just stuffed with them, and she pulled it out, and she gave it to my daughter, so when she came up, she she said, look, mom, I've got you a hat, so uh, I was, I was part of the crowd, part of the cool kids, and, um, and then we ran around, and, and, and I have the most fun reading the uh, the signs, and um, I wish I could remember all of them. But I would get some photographs of people's signs, and I'll pass those mm-hmm. on to you. And um, and they had uh, little monitors where you could listen to the speeches. Um, I really it was just too crowded, too much going on. Um, I didn't get to hear a whole mu- a whole bunch there. Um, uh, before we left, though, Gloria Steinem was, was speaking, and I was watching that on the TV, and, um, and it, it was really very interesting um, to hear her perspective, and um, I noticed when, um, when I was coming back on the train, there were two women sitting there, and they had their ERA buttons on, and they were talking about the, the marches in the 70s, and I thought that was really cool. And um, what, what else? So we, we were trying to figure out where we were going to march, and then, and then it was kind of coming through, it was dawning on us that we, um, we really weren't going to march. It was too crowded, there was too much, and there was no place to really move to. Um, my daughter's friend decided she needed some food, and um, we had to wait in a very long line to get a hot dog for her, and um, she found out she was a dollar short. And somebody said, "Oh, here you go. Here's a dollar," and um, and that was just kind of the the overall atmosphere. It was incredibly supportive, and I hadn't really experienced that to that degree before. You know, usually the, those 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 marches or gatherings aren't everyone's kind of aware that it's tight and we have to work with each other, but this was uh, an incredible outpouring of emotion. Um, and uh, and we saw uh, there were men, women, very diverse crowd. Um, let's see. Um, well, there was one event that I was particularly proud of. Um, not that I participated, not proud of myself, but uh, about four, four to six young men, college age, all white, um, stood in the middle of the street and they unfurled a banner which was probably, let me see, maybe seven feet long, and it was a Trump banner. And um, and so they stood there, and they're like, whoa, whoa, and and everybody just ignored him and walked around him. Nothing. And I was like, yes, 
once again, it delegitimizes when you get involved in those um, kind of conversations. So they just stood there and eventually rolled it up and walked away. And I was like, cool, way to go. Um, Did you see any other, um, uh, like, counter-protesters? I saw, um, on, you could still see um, some of the people that had been there for the um, inauguration, but they weren't at the protest. I didn't see just that event. Um, I did have an experience when I got to Dulles. Um, the only jump seat that I could get out of the D.C. area was over at Dulles, so I made my way over there at the in the end of the day, and um, I was getting a bite to eat at one of the restaurants. At this time, I was in full uniform, so um, it was an older woman. Um, she uh, white. And um, she, she wasn't entirely informed about the, the march or, or what was going on. Um, she didn't seem to be particularly interested in it. But so she was in front of me, it was myself, and there was another fellow. Um, and, and she turned around, and she, because the TV is on, and she goes, well, I had heard that there's more people there than at the inauguration. And this man, who was maybe late 30s, he jumped across me, finger wagging, and raised his voice at her. And he goes, you can't believe that. You don't believe that. They're just lying. They're lying to you. And she's just standing there going, okay. And and, and I stayed between them, um, not because of my size, but strangely enough, a uniform seems to calm people down. Um, and uh, I guess being in an a airline uniform in an airport, they might view me as having backup. Um, but uh, but he was he was quite adamant that she understand that the information she was hearing was completely false. And uh, and I just I thought that was really intriguing. Having been there, I had not seen anything or looked at the news. I had no uh, no idea how many people were there. I had no idea really how many people came to the inauguration. Um, I had been working. So um, I couldn't say yes or no. I mean, at the time, if, if I had been asked, I would have said there were a lot of people there, but that's it. Um, it wasn't until later that I realized that there were a tremendous amount of people there, and it was, it was quite... Uh, quite a moment uh, in history, so, um, so, so that felt good. Um, I have to agree, uh, comparing numbers really doesn't mean anything. Um, what, what was so disappointing is to have that many people at your doorstep and not one politician felt the need to come out, um, uh, you know, down here, I understand that uh, in Atlanta, mm -hmm. John Lewis came out to speak, and you're thinking this is such an event, and obviously it means. I mean, if you get this many people in one place, there that's a strong feeling. People want to talk about something, and as a politician, isn't that exactly where you mm -hmm. want to be? Um, I mean, even a bad politician could could take advantage of that, you know. Um, uh, but I, I was I was disappointed that they try to pretend it didn't happen and then to downplay it. I, 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 and, um, I was a little hurt as the weeks passed that people didn't, people kind of went, all right, you know, maybe. And I, yeah, I was a little stunned that they, there was just no need to respond to it at all. I thought that was, that was kind of bizarre. And, uh, and, and to me, my understanding of politics is that it should be all about compromise. And if you're not compromising, then you're not doing it right. Nobody should walk right away from the table saying, we won, because it's not how it works. Um, and that's kind of the, the emotion that seemed to be, you know, we won, shut up. Yeah. Just go, go back to your corner. Yeah. Um, so... So, so going back to the, the march, you, you, you didn't get to, to 
actually participate in the march toward the White House at all? Um, we stayed, we started in the Smithsonian area, and, and they said, okay, start here. Here's, you know, everybody's going to start right here. They're going to come down from the, the main stage there, and we're going to move this way. So we're there, and we're ready. And it started to march, and then they stopped it. They're like, okay, hold on a second. We're not going to do it. Because I think it was 1 o'clock. Am I remembering correctly? That I think it was supposed to start at 1. Anyway, um, so we had several far, uh, false starts. And, um, and so uh, the three of us just took it upon ourselves then to just wander around. We're like, okay, we're going to have to go find this, find out, you know, what's going on. Um, we never made it to the main stage. Um, and um, I think I left, I don't know, I think I left about five, I'm trying to think how long it would have taken me to get my stuff, get changed, get to the airport and get on a flight. So I probably left about five or six. So I think it was, no, probably earlier, but um, I, I did leave my daughter there. Okay. Um, so she was going to continue um, on and, and still try to find the march. <laughs> And um, what I'm kind of disappointed, and I've talked to other people, is they made their way and they dropped their signs all up there. And, um, and I wish I had had, um, and Catherine said that she had done the same thing. So I wish I'd been able to see that. But I, I was just afraid that if I missed that flight and yeah. didn't make it to work, they, they'd kind of, they kind of frown on that thing, that kind of stuff. So. so I did my best. Yeah, that was pretty, you, you, you were... <laughs> I'm really impressed that you, you got yourself there. You knew you, you had a time you had to get back as well. Uh, yeah. And you had to change back into uniform and get back on a plane. Um, mm. That I mean, in D.C., when it's the busiest it's been since probably Obama 2. Yeah. Um, so that... that what, what had me sweat so bullets there for a minute is I didn't anticipate, I thought I could really make use of the, uh, the subway. But they, uh, when I went back to the Smithsonian station, I had a hard time just getting there. And once I got back there, I had found that it was closed down. So that's when uh, I started to break a sweat, and I knew I couldn't get back through the crowd. So there was a, a I, I say I did this, but um, there was a little fence, and then there was a pipe. I don't know if it was running air to the buildings or something. So I climbed the fence. And I kind of did, I was walking, you know, on this pipe all the way down. And there were enough people there. I was like, please don't have a police officer see me because he's going to yell at me. And um, because I couldn't get through the crowds to get down the street to try to get to the next metro station to see if it was open. And I was a little worried about that because they had closed on our way down. That metro station had been closed too. So I was like, please have opened up. So, um, so I was making my way to metro stations until I got to one, um, but you know it all worked out. And I, I kind of, at that point I was like, you know, I've been working enough years. If if I call in and say, you know, I'm so sick, uh, I won't be fired or anything. But um, I felt I should make the effort. Um, but yeah, it was it, it was it was really interesting. Um, but people were helping people through the crowd, um, and uh, it, yeah, it, it, and, and every corner I turned, you just saw people pouring in. It uh, it was just a mass of people that I have not seen the likes of. What did you think about when you saw all of these pink hats, like just all together? It, it, it was just fantastic. It was just fantastic to have so many people on the same page. And what about the, because there was some criticism from feminists as well as from like ultra conservatives about, you know, the, the idea of this, this pussy hat, this mm -hmm. pink hat. What did you feel about, about it? Um, well, it was kind of a ridiculous looking hat, but... Um, <laughs> I, you know, uh, what, what I've noticed in the language today, it's become, I'm going to sound so old, but it's, it's become, vulgar has become more acceptable. And, um, you know, I, 
I really even feel uncomfortable saying the word pussy, you know, it's like, <laughs> bad word. But so, you know, it's not something that I would have immediately gone to. Um, but in the same sense, it's, it's what struck a large group of people. Um, you know, my daughter and her friends included, and, um, you know, I can't let that get in the way, <laughs> you know? Um, but, uh, I, um, I don't know. I don't, it, it's, it's, it w wouldn't have been exactly my language for sure, but, um, I, I, I have to go with it. Um, tell me what it was like going on a march with your daughter. It was fantastic. Um, I had, I had to laugh, um, because my mom was very intrigued about this and, um, she said, don't worry. And I couldn't tell if she was joking, and it, I don't think she really was. Um, not entirely. She's like, don't worry, I have um, money if you get arrested. I was like, I don't think we're going to get arrested, Mom. So we really had three generations, because my mom was actively texting us through the entire thing. And, you know, what's happening now? We'd send pictures and stuff like that. So we had kind of three generations there. And um, and she was like, um, you know, take care of Catherine. I don't want her to get hurt or anything. I was like, Mom, it's not violent. And I'm sure she was texting Catherine, take care of your mom. I don't want her to get hurt. And um, so, uh, but, you know, I, part of me was like, oh, my gosh, I'm kind of introducing her to <laughs> to this and then I was like yeah I'm introducing her to this this is great um, politics has kind of always been a part of, of our life and in our family my husband's father um, worked actually worked for the CIA he's now passed away so we can say that he worked for the CIA he was came out of World War II and, and um, started working for an intelligence agency and they they lived all around the world so uh, politics is something that comes up constantly, and uh, and, and and his family um, was and is very versed in it. Um, so for her to be interested in it um, was exciting for me. For me to experience her first march with her was just. I couldn't ask for anything more. And for her to know that she can do that, that's an option. And um, I was talking to my sister-in-law, who I adore, but she's very much, I don't want to get involved with that. They take care of this, I take care of me kind of thing. And while we were talking, she said, you went to that? I said, yeah, yeah, I was up there. And she goes, did they even know why they were marching around? And I was like, well, actually, they did. There were several points. They have a website where they built out points. They talked to a lot of different communities. And she really wasn't too interested in hearing about that. But, um, but she just, you know, she looked kind of hesitant that, it, that there was a, a very clear response to her question. And, um, but with regards to Catherine, I think the fact that she can, she has a voice, it was very important. And for it to be such a fantastic experience and such a successful experience, you're like, all right, what a good way to start. Yeah. It was a very positive. It was. It, there was, it, I, it was the most peaceful march ever. I, it was. Um, I was uh, I was the first flight out of Munich after 9-11. And that was one of the most... Uh, Interest, it was an interesting experience. Everybody was very much aware of everyone else. They were very much concerned about everybody else. They were um, they were paying attention. They were thoughtful, and um, it was it was you know it came out of sadness, so it was different. But in the same way, that was the only other time I felt such you know such powerful engagement in the yeah. moment. Yeah. Um. Did you did you take part in any of the chants? Um, you know, some of them I, I was like, mm, I don't want to do that one, but um, <laughs> but yeah, this is what democracy looks like. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, there were some uh, that I, I was hoping, you know, about Melania, which I was like, no, we're not. That's that's not appropriate. That's not that's not why I'm here. So, um, but uh, but yeah, they were. 
some, some of them were pretty interesting. I, I tend to be more of a watcher. So, um, so I was really interested in the signs. I was really interested in how people were interacting with one another, um, how they were kind of sharing their stories with strangers, which is just fantastic. Um, and uh, like the two women with the ERA buttons, they were just, you know, these young people were just, oh, that sounds so old too. They were in their early 20s and teens, and they were hanging around them, and they're just, just telling them stories. Yeah, it's so great. They were, and it's something I did notice very strongly multi generational sort of. Absolutely. Um, yeah, they're it just, it just from. I, I'm glad that it touched on so many people, yeah. that it, it uh, so many people felt engaged by it because that's where the power is, that's where the strength is. Was there anything throughout the day that just like took you by surprise? Um, Oh gosh, the 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 sheer number of people. I mean, just uh, I I I can't even begin to describe how tight it was in places. Um, but uh, and and the the strength of the emotion yeah. that was that was going through it. Um, I uh, you know I I had been to kind of rallies and things like that, and everybody's very kind and you know move along. But this everybody was so engaged in the moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you did you get emotional at all throughout the uh, day? Yeah, yeah. Um, when uh, when I said oh, I'll probably cry again. When I said goodbye to Catherine, and she's like all set to go. She had her hat on, and I was like, oh, oh my gosh, I'm so excited for you. So and she and she looked at me, and she's like, oh, mom, you're crying. I was like, sorry. <laughs> she gave me a big hug. I was like, we'll get it together. <laughs> but um, but yeah, just out of happiness. Yeah. I think there was a lot of that throughout yeah. the game. Yeah. Um, so talk about you got yourself to the airport. <laughs> you, you got in between these that that old yeah, lady and the guy. Um, wh- how were you feeling on your way home? Well, I just so happy I had chosen. You know, the exhaustion and knowing I had to get get up early the next day and go to work. I was like, oh, it's all worth it. It was all worth it. I was so happy that I participated. And um, and there were people on the the plane that night that had participated in the march, and they were just all crashed out. You know, it was one of these. <laughs> and um, and I, I was I was still trying to make sense of it all. Um, I hadn't seen a lot of the news, um, you know, uh, just just clips. But there hadn't. I don't think the newspapers had had a chance to gather all the information and give a full picture of it. So I did not have the full picture because just being, you're just in that little part that you're moving around. Um, so I, I was still kind of absorbing. What what that meant? I don't I don't even know. I could have told you at the time what it meant. Um, you know, you you were hoping that it made some impact. Um, I'll go back to I was hoping you know maybe a politician may have come out and said something. Um, I, well, I, I Schumer said something and Pelosi and and that, but they were kind of expected. Um, but. Uh, but yeah, I was hopeful. Very hopeful. It must be kind of nice having had such a like crazy hectic day to have like that little while on the plane just to decompress, sit down, yes. decompress, and actually kind of like focus in, yeah. like to think about your day. Uh, um, yeah, airplanes are great for transitions. They really are. <laughs> they, that's what they are. They're like entirely a transition moment. Um, but. Uh, yeah, it, it, it was neat. And, um, you know, just to hear from the crew, the people they were bringing up, they were in really good spirits. Um, and, and, and to, you know, hear about their, their kind of interaction with it. I know some of them uh, didn't go quite to the march, but they said, you know, we had a couple hours in the morning, so we went to, to you know, to area and we kind of saw it gathering together. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that 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 was kind of uh, it. It just you just you went okay. So I don't have to just live with this outcome. 
there is something that will happen and there's other people that feel the same way I do which you know but when you just see their bodies it's a big difference what did you think once you got home and were able to actually see the news and mm -hmm. you saw the crowds around the world it's not just here but around the world yes, what, how did that affect you um I you know that that just that just blew me away um and once again I was like I'm so glad that I took part in this um the when I found out that Atlanta had 60,000 people and I thought wow Atlanta doesn't get 60,000 people together um even you know with my association with Europe you know it takes nothing for the French to take to the streets and I always wondered um uh, I studied political science and I always wondered what would it take to get Americans out on the streets and you really you know you can pretty much take anything away from them and they still won't take to the streets so it was it was kind of nice to see that oh yeah it, it can happen it does happen um, but uh, but I, I when I saw this stuff around the world because I wasn't entirely aware I can't say that I didn't know but you know I was like oh London yeah sure of course and you know maybe in Europe but when I saw everything around the world I was just like okay this is a lot of people saying enough's enough. Yep. What did you think about the, the quality of the, the reporting by different um, news outlets of, of the marches? Um, it, it, um, it seemed to be more of the same. It seemed to be like residual from the, uh, from the election. You did get people that were so adamant like that man that this many people showed up or didn't show up once again it's that's not the purpose the purpose is you know these are these are uh, issues that people wanted to talk about and they felt that they might be ignored and um, so talking about numbers to me was it was very irrelevant um, but um, I you know I, I was pleased Sometimes I think that newsrooms get can go, okay, this is an issue we kind of want to talk about, and now we've given this to talk about, and that is, that's great. Um, I, I thought the, the New York Times did a really good job. Um, they focused on what I felt was important or the issues and why this happened. Um, I, I've kind of drifted away from TV news um, because sometimes I think they misuse pictures to, you know, exploit. Um, but uh, I, um, I tried to read as many newspapers and st that I could. Um, my general forms, let me see, where do I get my news? Probably NPR, New York Times, um, the Atlanta paper, The Economist. Um, I wish I could remember. There was an article in The Economist that intrigued me, but I can't right remember it. Um, and, um, and and Vanity Fair in the Atlantic. That those are my long forms. But I think I think they did. I think they did a, a good job. Um, it was you know it was weird. Sometimes they, it's like they wanted to talk about it, but then they, 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 you know, they couldn't, and they were afraid how somebody was going to take this. And there's this, this media right now is going through such a, you know, who are we and what are we, um, kind of thing. And 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 you, I've noticed that they're citing sources a lot more often than maybe they did before, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, it, it too is going through a transition and I would like to, you know, 10 years down the road, I'd like to see how media comes out on the end of it uh, and reporting and journalists um, because I think they're, they're going through a, a change in how they, how they work. But I, I think they, there, were, there were many times when I went, yeah, that was my experience. Yeah. Oh. A while ago, you said something about issues. Was there were there any issues in particular that you felt that, that that were central to you? That this is why I'm marching. Um. Yeah, it, it would. It definitely would have fallen under women's issues. Um, I. Um, 
women's sexuality that it, it sometimes it's just uh, it's confusing the message you get and I remember I, I was I was turning I was 12 13 you know um, middle school high school um, at the end of the 70s and that's when I started to absorb what I guess would be second wave feminism the the information that was coming there and I remember so clearly watching a commercial that said um, let me see how did it go it was a song about a perfume I can bring home the bacon I can fry it up a pan fry it up in a pan and never ever let you forget you're a man and I remember thinking oh my god I gotta work I gotta cook and <laughs> I have to do all of this and and to me that's been like the ongoing message to females and then you have when you have children of course um, particularly when I did so 90s you had you had to be the perfect mom you had to be the room mom you had to be for every event and you had to shelter your kid to 14 different extracurriculars, as well as hold a job, as well as, for goodness sakes, don't ever get, gain a pound, and, you know, you still got to look good, and, and it's just like, are you kidding me? It's just, it, it's ridiculous, um, these, the messages that you get, and, um, and, and that is a little bit not, not super specific, but, um, but, yeah, that was that was one of the things that I was marching against, and um, specifically Planned Parenthood, which I think is for some reason they this is decided that this is what's you know what they're going to focus on. Um, you know, it helps poor women get the medical care that they need. Why is that even a conversation? I don't know, um, and. Um, and um, equality and pay, um, the the whole thing coming out um, about you know Fox News and um, the harassment charges and things like that, and the idea that uh, you know you can even go back to um, Bill Cosby and with people saying you know there's there's they these women number in the teens yet they're 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 being told that they're making it all up. They just want the money. Like, well, you know, that's, that's just doesn't seem quite right. Um, so, so those, those were the, the larger women's issues that, that I was, that I was, um, marching for. And when you got back, um, were you, were you able to talk to your friends and family about your experiences were they supportive of, of what you had done um, my mom was was in was was she wanted to know all about it um tentatively but she wanted to know all about it and um then um my husband was very supportive and actually he was like i should have gone to the one in in atlanta i should have gone i was like probably and um my son was was down um in at, at university and, and he was very supportive too. He was sending me texts that day and, and my daughter and sister texts. And um, my, you know, my brother and my sister-in-law, they just felt it was you know a, a bunch of loonies out there with, with signs. Um, uh, my younger brother wanted to know all about it. He thought that was very cool. Um, at work, um, I, I, you know, um, Flight attendants, although or the male population is growing, um, but being a flight attendant is, is a very female job in a lot of ways. And so we have something of a sorority, I guess is the only way to describe it, but there's definitely a sisterhood. And um, even if what I found is even if somebody doesn't uh, agree with you, we have so much in common otherwise that they will talk about it. And, uh, and that's been really, uh, really fun for me to hear how other people um, saw it. So we're a few months away from the march now. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me how you've been feeling about you know, how this administration has settled in? Um, 
um, since then? I was kind of hoping that maybe, you know, expectations were not going to be met, but unfortunately they, they are being met. Um, the, you know, the health care policy, the, and, um, and even the trickle down with Deal and his campus carry policies. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very disappointed. Um, the things that have come out of his mouth are just so, he's so poorly educated and poorly prepared for the job. Um, and he is passing it off to people that have no background, but they're simply loyal to him. And um, I've been to enough countries to know what that looks like. And um, a lot of people are like, Ugh, you're getting so, you know, oh, that's, that's, you're just, you're taking things to extreme. And I'm like, no, they, mm-hmm. baby steps, and particularly Germany. Um, you know, I, I know enough German history to know how you ease into these things, and you do have to be very mindful and very watchful um, and, and vocal um, and take it seriously. And I, I think we, and myself included, as a nation, have just kind of wandered away from politics because, you know, it was a machine that was running pretty well, um, particularly when you compare it to other countries. I mean, we, we have our problems for sure, um, but there are other countries out there that are so poorly run um, that absolutely nothing gets done. Um, and, and to see this sort of populism is, it, it, it does hurt. But I, I mean, I, um, like you, I had to step away from the, the news for a while, um, and, and just kind of focus on things that I felt I could do because you do feel very helpless. And, um, I took, um, the Women's March did have on their app, you know, uh, 10 steps in the first 100 days. So I tried what I could to do uh, from their suggestions um, and uh, participated in the Science March once again um, to be counted. Um, did you have a sign this time? <laughs> No, I I tell you I'm a watcher. I really should. <laughs> I need to be better sign purpose, better signage. Um, but I, I my husband went with me. Um, so uh, and next time I just need to get a crowd. See, I, I'm learning. See, I, I'm I'm getting better. So next time I probably have a sign, and next time I need to really invite more people. And um, because I, I I think I'm just going to do this on my own, which I'm not getting the point there. I need to do it with a crowd. <laughs> I need to gather up some more voices but uh, but yeah learning um what because there's there's a there's a lot of activity taking place and there's a, as you talked about there's a lot of news and stuff like that and we mm-hmm. we have 18 months well not 18 months now but we, we have told till um the end of of 2018 for there to be another um like the midterm term elections which is quite a long time. How do you not get burned out on everything that's going on? Oh, um, um, I, I, I know it right now, even, I'm still a little overwhelmed on the different ways to proceed. Um, I think the best thing is to pick some climate change, um, uh, support of the media, um, women's rights, or one of those, and just kind of focus on that. Um, or either for, you know, a year or something like that. And um, that way you'll able to see movement. Um, what I kind of did at first was I was a little scattered, and, um, and you, don't, you don't really get to see the, any results. So um, I, I would probably say a deep dive in one is, is probably going to be more fulfilling. And if it's fulfilling, then you stick with it. Um, but yeah, there's, I think there's going to be a lot of fatigue, and that's what I worry about in the ne- next election, is that people are going, this will be the new normal. And then, you know, if he claims that, you know, the Civil War, why hasn't anyone talked about that? Um, they'll be like, yeah, sure, it happens all the time, let's just keep moving. And when, when that needs to be questioned each and every time. Um, but 
you know, you, there's fatigue, and, and to me that's the biggest worry, there's fatigue. So let's, th- let's think about like cup half full for a mm-hmm. moment, like moving forward the next few months, maybe the next year, what do you hope will happen? Um, I think the focus is now on national politics, and I hope the focus returns to, uh, well, no, is more evenly distributed to local politics. Um, That's one thing for sure that I know that everyone has um, turned, you know, has just ignored. Um, particularly in uh, DeKalb County, uh, our water and sewer has been a hot mess for a long time. Um, and that's just things that, that people expect. You know, you expect the water to come out of your tap. Sorry, my stomach's rumbling. Mine is too, don't worry. And uh, you expect water to come out of your tap, but people have wandered away from that. So I really hope that there's more um, an engagement in local politics. I have a, a friend who is a uh, ward commissioner over in um, Smyrna, and um, she was telling me about an interesting uh, meeting she had. A young man came in, um, she said he was in his early 30s, and he said, basically, I want your job. And she said, well, I kind of like my job, but here's how you get here. And um, and I said, so had you had any kind of meetings like that before? And she said, no, that's the first time anybody came in. So, um, so you know, I, I'm hopeful that people will uh, recognize um, that they need to focus um, both locally and nationally. Um, I, I don't understand why we have elections on Tuesdays when we should have them like Europe on the weekends. Um, or make I mean, a public holiday. Exactly. Um, uh, but, you know, those, those kind of things. Um, I mean, I think I know why they happen, mm-hmm. but that might be the cynic in me. Um, but, but yeah, I think you, you do need to contact those representatives, and um, and they need to, and, and and become more engaged. And for some people, that might be running for office or taking those offices, um, you know, being appointed to them. So, uh, so that's what I hope. Um, what about your fears, other than like the, the sort of fatigue that we're all probably yeah. going to face? Do you have any other fears moving forward? Um, I, um, I'm a, I, well, you know, I, my fear tends to change with the, uh, with the headlines, and I need, to, I need to definitely stop that. But right now, you know, uh, religious groups having more say in politics, I think that um, that, is, that is a real problem. Um, because that immediately just to me just says whoever has the most money, which is where we are right now. Um, and, uh, you know, and uh, there was a, an article written, um, should, should we all become corporations um, because of some of the sway and, uh, and now um, with a new tax bill. But something positive with the new, um, when they were talking about the new um, changes in taxes, actually it came out to be rather positive. Um, There were a a lot of changes that the Democrats were asking for that actually were put in it. So maybe there are some people realizing that you know, they, they will have to come back to their states. I was disappointed that Sonny Perdue and Isaacson, neither one of them held any sort of public meetings. But What have you thought about all of these, you know, indivisible groups or just groups generally going to, um, like, truly engaging in, in public meetings? I think I think it's fantastic. I think um, it, it you, you have to, you, you have to show your face and, and just having a warm body in the room makes a difference. It's a little bit harder to look somebody in the eye and, and tell them a story. Um, I, I, um, I was talking to somebody, the, the Moral Mondays that were taking place, uh, I don't, are they still taking place? I'm not sure, but I know that there are actually protest, like, like protest Tuesdays or something like that, or there's one day a week where there's like protests take place, oh, okay. a small pro- over lunchtime. Yeah. It's funny. We're going to get our protest in at lunchtime, but that sounds so appropriate. Um, but, uh, but, 
yeah, I, th I think those things. Um, and But you do need to change them up too because, you know, somebody might, after a while, um, a politician might be able to just walk by that and not notice it anymore. So, um, so you, you kind of have to keep your approaches fresh um, and I think you have to keep faces in front of people. Um, so there's, uh, it, it's interesting um, how many people I've started to run into that actually have some connections, some political connections, um, that's kind of come out that wasn't talked about before. Um, so. I have one last question. Um, if somebody is planning to go to March, whatever March it is in future, what would be your, your one piece of advice to them? I will get that sign together. <laughs> um, I'm always afraid that, you know, everybody has these clever signs, and I'm like, oh, mine's going to be just really dull. But um, uh, I, I don't know. What would I tell them? Um... Be, be open-minded to, uh, to what's going to happen. Um, be weary if all you hear is the exact same thing that you want to hear. I think you should always question that. Um, and uh, and I, I don't think any one group or one party has all the answers. They're solving one specific problem, and that's fantastic. Um, but sometimes you can't, you can't entirely solve that one problem. You kind of have to consider... Um, consider all the other uh, elements that play into it. So, um, so I guess listening mm -hmm. is the best skill. Very, very. And a bottle of water, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything I haven't asked you that you you wish I had asked you? No. No. Um, Any last thoughts? No. I mean, it, it was an incredible experience. And and um, and it, it 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 kind of made me think. Okay, it's gonna be okay. Cool. That's a great place to end. Yeah. <laughs>